Welcome to Wager Talk TV, everyone. I am your host, Minty Betts, and I'm joined by two of the best MLB handicappers at Wager Talk, Brian Leonard at B Leonard Sports on Twitter, who has been the most profitable MLB capper for the past four years. And I do have to mention that, Brian, you are on a hot NHL run as of the beginning of 2021 as well. Congrats. Uh, also joining us today is Dwayne Bryan at Wager Talk Dwayne on Twitter. He is the number one all time profitable MLB capper when it comes to totals. Uh, he is on a hot run in college basketball and what a month to be hot because it's March Madness. Uh, so give these guys a follow on Twitter and a look at wagertalk.com. In this video, we're going to be discussing three tips from each capper on betting baseball. And who better to ask than the two most profitable baseball handicappers on Wager Talk. Guys, I've only been betting on baseball the last few years because I was sick of doing nothing waiting for football season to return. And I find that baseball can be very profitable because there are so many ways to win in baseball, but this sport requires so much research. I, I think the most, in my opinion, um, it's not just, okay, which team has the best starting pitcher and, and the best record of the two teams today? I'll bet on them. Um, so before we begin, these two have an awesome combo deal, an all-access package for both Brian and Dwayne for the entire MLB season. Check it out at wagertalk.com. Brian, let's start with you. What is your first tip on betting on baseball? Yeah, you might mentioned hockey. Hockey and baseball run together, basically. I'm trying to align myself with what the teams are trying to do. They're just trying to win. It's not like the NFL or in college basketball where you've got to cover a certain number. The team wants to win. I want to win. And that's what makes hockey and baseball so profitable. Uh, one of the reasons I do so well in baseball is because I play underdogs. Now, we're playing them on the money line. A lot of people don't like to play underdogs on the money line because you're betting a team that is supposed to lose. That's why they're the underdog. But your best teams in baseball win 60% of the time. The worst teams in baseball win 40% of the time. Baseball is the, is the one sport that you can really make a lot of money playing the underdogs because depending on who's pitching, a lot of these teams are very equal. And if, uh, if you're looking to play plus money, you want to bet baseball. Yeah, I um, have a problem betting on big favorites. I think that's my, I'm just going to insert my tip here. I, I don't bet on big favorites because teams that are historically good uh, will be capitalized on on public bias by the books and be overpriced because they know the public will bet on them. So I like the underdog pick. Dwayne, what is your tip, sir? Well, the obvious place to start is with pitching. Uh, looking at it from a totals perspective, the last couple seasons, bullpens have been the deciding factor pretty much for me, whether I'm going to win or lose. Uh, they've been pretty brutal. Uh, and basically with the bullpens, you're looking at, you know, what arms are you going to see? Is your starter expected to go deep into the game? Is he going to be out after four or five innings? Um, you know, if so, you're going to see a lot of middle relief. Those are the worst arms in the pen. You're going to be looking or I'm going to be looking at an over in a game like that. Um, if I'm expecting my starter to go deep and I'm only going to see maybe a setup guy and a closer, uh, as long as they're fresh, they're not fatigued and their form is good. You know, that's an under scenario for me. Uh, so, you know, because of the bullpens and the way they've performed the last couple of seasons, at least in the games that I've been on, um, I've been with the first five unders a lot. Uh, if I'm going to bet an under, it's almost always going to be a first five. Uh, the overs are going to be full game. Mm, I do like it, especially um, in in Dodgers games. When I see Kenley Jansen uh, start, you know, uh, relief the the starting pitcher, I should say, I will live bet the over or the opposite side because I just know certain relief pitchers are just like awful. So, uh, Brian, what is your tip number two on betting on baseball? Yeah, baseball is a little bit different than uh, NBA. Let's say. Uh, baseball, you have a 25-man roster, maybe 26. It depends on every year they change it a little bit because of the COVID. But you have a 40-man uh, roster, and you have your entire organization. A lot of people will look at a certain team and see, like the Washington Nationals have been so good with that starting rotation over the years. But the average team in Major League Baseball will start 10 different pitchers during the season because of injuries. And in baseball, you're playing every day. So you've got players more of a chance to get injured. And so not only do you have to handicap the 25-man roster, you have to handicap the 40-man roster, and you have to handicap the entire organization because some organizations will bring up their big, young prospects while others want to keep back on the, on the time and keep them in the organization for longer. 
So you've got to know this coming into the season, and it really sets you up to be able to know when and where to bet these teams because of what is going on for the entire season. Uh, just because the team's got the best starting lineup in baseball does not mean those, those players are going to play all 162 games. True that, true that. Handicap the entire organization. Dwayne, what is your tip number two? Well, again, from a totals perspective, I'm always paying attention to the weather. Uh, ball travels farther in the warmer weather. It doesn't travel as well in the cold. Um, another thing to look at is the wind. Is it blowing in? Is it blowing out? Uh, is it blowing across the diamond? Um, how fast is the wind blowing? Uh, all that plays a factor. Uh, and the wind's effect is different in different stadiums. So you got to do your research and see, you know, how the wind factors into each individual stadium as well. Um, another aspect are the stadiums that uh, have a retractable roof. Is it going to be open or closed? Uh, you know, if you have a warm weather day in Arizona and um, the roof is open, ball is going to travel better. Somebody decides to close the roof, all of a sudden that ball is not going to travel as well as it would have, you know, if had it been open. Um, the other thing is, too, that weather can change. So if you look in the morning and you see a certain forecast, that doesn't mean that's what it's going to be at game time. Uh, wind can change direction, can change speed. Uh, if it's a hot, humid day, a thunderstorm or shower could roll through and, and kill that heat and humidity as well. Uh, so that's something you pretty much want to pay attention to throughout the entire day. Hmm. All righty. And Brian, what is your last and final tip number three? Yeah, my last and final tip is to know what the goals are for each organization coming into the season. For example, last year, Tampa Bay plays the Dodgers in the World Series. The Dodgers, all season long, it was World Series or bust. Tampa Bay has been in this division with Boston and New York for so long. They were just trying to get their head above water and make it to the playoffs. They were very happy to make it to the playoffs. When they got there, they took advantage of it. If you find a team that has high expectations, we've seen this a lot. In fact, the Washington Nationals last year uh, coming off a really successful season, and then they come out and they laid an egg early. If you find a veteran team that lays an egg early, that's a team you want to bet against as the season goes on. Uh, certain teams, lower uh, price teams like you know the Indians, the, the Pirates, and those type of teams, the Brewers, they don't have a lot of money. So as the season goes on, they'll start bringing in some of the younger players and trading away some of their talent. So it's, number one, good for the regular season, but it's also good if you're playing futures. You don't want to be betting on, for example, the Pirates over when they're going to trade away anybody who has value as the season goes on. Good tip. All right, Dwayne, last and final tip for our viewers. And again, from a totals perspective, I always want to know who my home plate umpire is. Uh, home plate umpire with a large strike zone is going to be good for an under. You know, it's going to lead to more strikeouts and some stranded base runners. If you've got a home plate umpire with a smaller strike zone, it's going to lead to some walks. Uh, extra scoring chances can be better for the over. Uh, I use the SDQL database uh, to see uh, some over-under results for specific starting pitcher and home plate umpire combos to see how, you know, that all works out. Uh, you know, I usually don't have a big bet in game one of a series because they release the home plate umpire information so late, uh, you know, shortly before the games. But after the first game of a series, you'll you can you'll know ahead of time because your first base umpire today is going to be your home plate umpire tomorrow uh, and so on throughout the series. So you can get a jump on your research, uh, you know, for games two and beyond in a series. Uh, and I mentioned uh, the home plate umpire starting pitcher combo is one example I looked up was uh, Clayton Kershaw when Scott Barry is behind the plate. Uh, six of the seven games with those two went over. Uh, but you got to dig a little deeper and see, you know, why was that? You know, was it the offense or was Kershaw, you know, not as sharp with Barry at behind the plate? And what I found there is in those seven games, Kershaw had a 502 ERA and a 206 whip. Uh, so that tells me there might be a little bit something to that there. Uh, it's a SDQL database, great tool uh, to uncover stuff like that. Wow. Great tips from these two guys. Do not forget to check out their combo package at wagertalk.com where you can get their all access MLB picks through the World Series on wagertalk.com. That wraps it up for our MLB betting tips from Brian Leonard and Dwayne Bryant. I'm Mitty Betts. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget to follow Wager Talk on Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to Wager Talk TV on YouTube. Thank you, gentlemen.